Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dirt Diggers UK. This is Scott. I am in the backyard today. I am not metal detecting, but there's a reason for that. And I'll tell you why. There's been a lot of people uh, wondering, wondering uh, what is the difference between the stock coil on the Simplex and the new SP35, which just came out from Nokia Macro, which is an absolute beautiful, beautifully big, big coil. Uh, so I decided to do an air test. And I want to explain something, uh, a little disclaimer beforehand. An air test, I personally do not consider conclusive, but it is still running a metal object under these coils regardless. So things may differ when you're out in the field. We met, we don't metal detect the air, we metal detect the dirt. So that said, um, today is going to be the SP28, which is the 11 inch double D coil versus the new massive SP35. Guys, this is a 12 and a half inches this way 13 and a half inches this way whereas this is only 11 in diameter okay so that said i've got a menagerie of finds to show you guys today uh while i do this air test i've got some small coppers the large coppers mostly british denomination things going on here i've got modern coins from small five p's to the large two two pound coin i've got small romans to large Cistercius Romans. I've got small hammer coins, to large hammer coins, small, medium, large, small, medium, large. That's how I'm gonna do that. I've got small buckles to large buckles, different shapes, different sizes. Some have a couple of loops in them. One has um, a small loop, one is perfectly round. Rings, I've got a white gold ring. I've got a, I think it's an 18 karat gold chain with links in it. And I've also got a very small, nine carat gold pendant which we're going to run under the coil today so hopefully we can come up with some conclusive evidence that this sp35 outguns the sp28 stock coil all right so that said i'm just going to get to it and let's get air testing find out what's going on with this big bad boy look at the size of this thing absolute beast let's go for it guys all right so this is what we're working with today guys as you can see there's plenty Coinage. So it's just my luck. I've got a power line in the backyard and I cannot do my air test there. So I'm in the front yard uh, and there's a power line across the street, but I've changed the the frequency to f3 seems to be doing all right this is a nick uh, a five pence it's got an iron core and this is, that's a good reason why i don't find a lot of five pences this is spitting out the iron Let's turn it sideways i'm getting absolutely nothing on that i wouldn't definitely not dig that we're going to move up to a two pence two pence this is the sp28 stock coil A little quiet around 12 inches. Not bad. 12 and a half inches on that, I would say. We're going to move over to a 20 pence piece. Oh, it likes 20 pences. Getting out of range. Say right around the nine inch mark on that one 20 centimeters i got centimeters on this side for you guys all right we're going to move over to a 10 pence piece another iron core british coin spendable I usually get these see this is the thing about an air test if this was in the sand i would have picked this up no doubt it would have been a solid signal Kind of spitting it out. All right, so let's just move on to the one pound coin. I'm going high and low on the coil. It's about nine and three quarters on that one, which is really, really good. Moving up to the big boy, going to the two pound coin. This is a special two pound coin, which I got from Detective Kev. 
Wait, let's try that one out. Scream him. Just about 10 inches on that one. I've got a big old cartwheel penny here. This should be screaming. Kind of letting go about 11, between, 20, between 10 and 11. I'd say I'd give about 10 and a quarter on that one. Got a big fat George the Third. I think that's a half penny. And she's letting go around. It's faint at 12, so I'll give it 11 on the King George the Third. Okay, let's move over to some silvers here. Let's go to some silvers. I think this is a, uh, who is this guy? I think it's an Edward the Fourth. It's a little silver, small Edward the Fourth. Let him go around. Let go around the eight eight inch point. Let's remove that. Let's go for a big fat silver. Let's go for a half crown. Pretty good about 10. Let's get faint at 11. It's pretty good. Let's, let's give it like 10, 10 and a quarter on that one. All right, we're, we're going to move into a small hammer coin. Oh, it likes hammers. It likes that. About eight and a half. Get a little faint at nine, nine and a quarter, eight and a half on that one. Let's move to a, I got a couple large hammers here. I got an Edward the first. Let him go around 12, pretty good around, definitely diggable at 10. Spain at 11 and 12. So I give that about 10, 10 and 40. I got a nice Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth the first. 1567. Hammer coin. This is Hunter's Kimmy's coin. Sorry about that, about, about 10, 10 and a half. I've got a cut quarter. I think this is a King Henry the Third. There's sideways too. About five and a half, six. About five and a half, six gets painted at seven, six and three quarters. So about that right there. Moving on to the buckles, small buckle, round, with two circles, with two rings in it. It's, it's a split. It's like a double decoil. Give me a double signal, one for each little hole. This is um, brass, I think, or copper. About eight and a half, eight, eight and a half on that one. Next buckle is, is going to be a single loop. Definitely diggable at eight, nine. I would dig that at ten. Thinking, I think about it at eleven. 
It was definitely, I don't know what I do at 12. Okay. Next buckle is a double looper, but it's a rectangle. So I will conclude on that buckle. Bane at 13, bigger ball at 11, 12 maybe on that one. All right, big buckle. Really nice buckle. This is Hunter's Kenny's buckle. Rectangle. Oh, I would dig that all day long. And she's going deep. Amazing. Definitely diggable at 13. Diggable at 14. 15. 16. And think about it at 17. 18, 19, it's gone. There you go. That's that buckle right there. All right, let's move on to the Romans, guys. Here's a very small Roman coin. It's not a minimum, but it is small. Going at nine. Think about it at seven and eight. Definitely diggable at six. Six and a half. Six and three quarters, I would say, on that one. Here's a medium size. Uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful coin. This is also Hunter's Gimme's coin, of course. This is a Hadrian, Emperor Hadrian. Disappearing at 9 and 10. Definitely diggable at 8. I would give it an 8 and a quarter, 8 and a half on that one. All right, we're going to move up to the big Cistercius. It's not a really thick Cistercius, but it's big. This is a Emperor Maximinus. I, this, I found this on the beach, right across the street. And who wouldn't dig that? Diggable, thinkable, nobody home at 12 inches. About nine and three quarters, 10 on that one. All right, we're going to go for, now this is a little treat for you guys. This is a Palstave Axe Head. I think it's Palstave Axe Head. This is an exact copy of the one Palm Z found on YouTube. He found it on the beach. He made me an exact replica. And here it is right here. So this is a big chunk of copper. So let's test this out. Big chunk. This should go the distance. Well, you think it would go the distance. Did better with the buckle, surprisingly. There's a mass amount of copper right there. 10, 11 on that one. All right, just for the fun of it, I'm going to throw a, a piece of lead in there. We're going to do a little bag seal. Just a piece of crappy bag seal, but it is a bag seal. My only piece of lead I'm going to use today. Bane at 10. Think about it at 9. Definitely digging it. About 7.5 on that one. All right, now we're going to do a couple. We're going to do a few American coins here. So, what I have here, I've got a Liberty Dime. So, I'm going to give that a run for our American friends. I think that's 90% silver, 90%, whatever it is. About nine, about nine on that one, guys. There's a 90% silver. This is a 1963 George Washington quarter, quarter of a dollar. 90% silver. All right, D disappearing between 10 and 11. Thinking about it at nine. Definitely digging it at eight. Okay, here we go. Here's a Kennedy half dollar. This is another 90 percenter. I won this off of Mr. Rob Random. I'm one of his awesome giveaways.
disappearing at 12. Thinking about it at 10. Definitely diggable at 9 on that one. Okay, let's get on to the gold. All right, just some jogger running by. Okay, this is a, um, a Pandora ring. This is the first ring I've ever found on the beach. This is a silver ring. Let's do a flat. Disappearing at 10. Let's go about nine on that one. Maybe 10. Let's give it nine and three quarters then, just to be fair. All right, here we go. Now this is a, a very wide banded uh, silver ring. Let's, I'm gonna leave, should I do it sideways? Let's do it, I don't know. Let's do it this way. Put the whole face in the coil. Definitely diggable at eight. All right, we're moving on to another silver ring. Smaller. At 11. All right, moving on to a white gold ring. I think this is uh, like 10 carat or 12 carat. Oh, not much there. Disappearing at six. Big about five. All right, next one up, we're going to do a small piece of nine carat gold. Just for the fun of it. Not very much going on there. I mean, you'd have to be real. Let's turn it sideways. Nothing. Moving it up and down the coil. It likes this spot right here, so we'll go with that. Wow, just disappears. Can't believe that gold. Got four, four and a half. Okay, here's here's the chain. All right. Let's just uh, let's just fold that. Let's just fold it like it would be in the ground. Let's just leave it hanging a little bit like that. Hold on a second. Just grab it. Well, you see it yourself, guys. You know what I mean? But it is an air test. And like I said, they are not conclusive. It is not in the dirt. It's, it's doing nothing. You know what? I've seen a lot of problems with these before because there's so many links. So many. There's hundreds and hundreds of little links. I don't know if it confuses the detector or what happens there, but that is the fact. So I'll put it all in one little ball. Let's try and make it as solid as possible. Links. What's up with that? It's really weird. Yeah, it's something about links and gold chains. It's kind of peculiar. Okay, and that sums up the SP28, guys. Excuse the seagulls that absolutely drive me insane. Okay, this is the fourth time I tried to do this because the seagulls are an absolute nuisance. I do apologize again. Here's the five pence. Nothing like on the SP28. There's nothing going on there, which is a shame. Like I said, on the beach, these would ring up for some reason. Like I said, this is a prime example of how air tests are inconclusive, but they do give signals on certain items really well. There's 2P. It's letting go about 12, 13 inches. Thinking about it at 11, definitely digging it at 10, 10 and a half, I would say on that one. All right, we're gonna move to the 20 pence piece. Oh, okay, 20 pence. That can go about 11 to 12, definitely diggable about 10, 10 and a half. I'm just gonna move this along quite quickly because there's so many noises and I do apologize. 10 P, iron core, spitting it out just like the sp28 on the beach i would i would get that that would be a solid signal one pound coin likes that it's letting go about 14 definitely diggable out of 10 
11. Thinking about it at 12. Yeah, I would think that at 12. Letting go at 13. So I would say about 12. 12 on that one. 11 3 quarters, 12 inches. Moving on to the cartwheel penny. Big fat piece of copper. Letting go about 12. I would definitely dig it at 10 and a half to 11. I would call it that right there on that one. This is the KG3. I think that is a penny. Yeah, that's too, too big to be a half penny. That's an oldie. That's what you want to hear in the field right there. Oh, hello. KG3, or 9, 10, 11. Disappear in about 13, 14. I would call that about a foot on that one. All right, going to the small silver. This is an Edward the Fourth, I think. Going high and low on the coil. At least this spot. So it's letting go. It's letting go at eleven. I'm definitely digging at nine and a half. Think about it at ten. It's just disappearing here. We're catching it here. All right, on that one. Big fat silver coming up. This is a King George the Fifth half crown from early 1900s. Still going strong. Letting go. So I would think that at 10. Think about it at 11. Think about it at 12. Because I know something's definitely there. It's letting go at 14. 13 and a half to 14 is letting go. So I definitely think that between 12 and 13 on that one. All right, small hammer. Up and down the coil. Now we're looking at six, seven, eight, Nine, thinking about it. Ten, thinking about it still. Fuzzy little signal at twelve. It lets go between. It starts letting go at twelve. I would definitely dig it between ten and eleven inches on that one. All right, on that one. Okay, Edward the first hammer coin. That's about seven hundred years old, isn't it? Ten, eleven. Letting go at 13, like the little hammered. My arm's gonna hurt after this. Letting go at a foot. So I would definitely dig that between 10 and 11. Uh, Queen is with the first. Big fat hammered. It's really thin though. Last one was thicker. About the same, going up and down the coil. Letting go at 13, I would dig it between, definitely dig it between 10 and 12 inches. Okay. In the small half cut, half cut, I'm not, I have, I've got quarters, but I just didn't grab them. So let's try the half cut. I think this is another King Henry III. Grabbing it nicely. Not bad for a tiny shard of silver. Let's go over here. Let's go. Right, it's disappearing at seven. I would definitely five, six, seven. This is definitely letting go at eight. So I think about it at seven, seven and a half. I would definitely dig it at six. It's definitely going at nine. All right, small buckle, small round buckle. Letting go at 13. Definitely digging at 7, 8, 9, 
10. Thinking about at 11. 12, 13 is disappearing. So definitely between 10 and 11 on that one is a diggable. Disappears at 12, 13. That's a small buckle. Oh, I didn't do the buttons on the last one. Let's do the buttons in the end anyway. I forgot the buttons. Sorry, guys. All right. This is um, the other buckle. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Disappearing. Thirteen and fourteen. Up and down the coil. Definitely dig about nine, ten. There you go. It might be a lengthy video. It's taking a while to do. I do apologize. Here's this buckle. Let's give this a whack. Nice and flat and parallel to the coil. Nine. Diggable at 11. Diggable at 12. Diggable at 13. Diggable. Thinking about it at 14. Diggable. Let's we'll start over. Disappears about there. Definitely diggable at 11 and a half to 12. Thinking about it at 13. All right. And that one. Here's that big buckle. Hunters can be found. Here we go again. This had the best depth of the SP28 last time around. Going strong. Going real strong. Still going strong. Thirteen, fourteen. Thinking about it at fifteen. Thinking about it at sixteen. Starts disappearing at seventeen. 15, 16 inches. That's really good. Moving along, we're going to do a small Roman coin. I'm going to switch arms here. <laughs> Disappears about nine. Definitely diggable at six. Thinking about it at seven. Going at nine. All right, medium sized Roman coin. Mr. Hadrian himself. Starts disappearing at 12. So it starts disappearing around 10. I definitely dig it at 8. Uh, 9 is a thinker. And it starts to disappear around here. So 8 to 9.5 on this one, I think. Let's go for the beak. Sestertius Emperor Maximinus. Maximimus or something. Down the coil, disappearing at one foot. Diggable, 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 disappearable. All right, so I would definitely say nine, ten and a quarter, maybe on that one. Okay, Pandora ring. Disappears around ten. Thinkable, uh, what is that, nine? Disappears at 10. Definitely diggable between seven and eight on that one. Okay, let's try this big fat silver ring again. Disappears about nine, 10. We're gonna do that small nine carat gold medallion. Disappears around six. Definitely diggable at five. Now we're going to move on to a white gold ring, which I think I said was 14 carat or something like that. But it is, it is circular, but it's got a break in it. We'll see what this does. It's not funny you think gold would be like super, super deep. Or it would, it would catch it really deep. This is the most conductive metal there is, isn't it? It's letting go really early on me. All right, it disappears around seven and eight, but I would definitely dig it between five and six and a half. Maybe. 
Yeah, I would say five and a half, five and a half to six on that one. All right, let's go with that gold chain. I'm just gonna ball it off and throw it in front of the coil and see what happens. Here we go again with those links. All right, now let's do that big copper palisade X head. Come on, can she go the distance? It's a big piece of copper. Come on now. Turn sideways. Disappears at 13. Think about 9, 10. Disappear at 11. Okay, so that's that. Let's try this piece of lead. Bag seal. Disappearing at 12. Thinkable at 9. Thinkable, mm -hmm. thinkable at 10. Let's say 9 on that one. What do we got left here? Okay, let's try the American coin. Okay, so where did I put that one? Okay, so we got... There we go. We got Mercury Dime. Disappearing at 12. Thinkable at 9. Thinking about it at 10. Disappears at 11, so I would go 9 to 10 on that one. For my American brothers and sisters, here's a 90%. 1963 Washington Quarter. 7, 8, 9. Up and down the coil. There we go again. Disappears around 9. Thinkable at 8. Definitely thinkable at 7. 90% silver Kennedy half dollar from 19... Oh no, it's 2018. Is it, it's, is it? I don't even know if that's silver. Is it silver? I don't know. Let's test it. Disappears at 12. Pickable at 9. Pickable at 10. Okay, let's try these buttons. Try these buttons. General service button. It's going deep. 13 disappears. Let's see about 10, 11 inches on that one. There's a gold gilt. Is uh, I think this is. It's not a dragon. It's, I think it's a wyvern. It's actually, a thing that looks like a dragon called a wyvern. Disappearing at 13, 14. I would think that at 11. I would definitely think that at 11. And here's another one. Disappears at 12. Think about 9 and 10. Okay, so that sums up the little comparison. Let's go have a chat. All right, you guys. So that concludes the the uh, air test for the SP28 versus the SP35. Look at that big dog. Look at the big one. I got two big dogs. That concludes the air test for the SP35 and the SP28. The stock coil for the Simplex. Stop it. And there you have it. That's the air test for the SP28 versus the SP35. The 12.5 by 13.5 inch coil. Brand new from Nokia Macro. Take what you can from this. It's simply an air test. Like I said, I don't totally go by air test, but I performed an air test today. And hopefully you guys can enjoy the results from that and, and, and make your own decisions. Uh, things are totally different in the dirt and, and in the sand. We don't metal detect the air. But it was it was worth doing an air test just to compare something to do while you're at home with your metal detectors you've got a couple coils laying around you can do an air test for yourself at home you know what i mean so thank you very much for coming scott dirt diggers uk i'm going to take off and i wish you guys the best of luck out there and uh hopefully uh you enjoyed the video and if you did please hit the like button and if you're not subscribed what can i say please hit subscribe it's free it's free you know what I mean? And there's lots more other things that are going to be coming up. There's things in the past. I've got playlists of Simplex videos on the beach, Simplex videos in the field, Simplex videos on plowed, Simplex videos on pasture, um, updates, tips and tricks. I just did a video on like pairing headphones. It's a little, little trick that you can do that you don't have to push both buttons. You'll see it. Just check out the last bit here. I'll put the little thing. Is it right there?
It's over there. Is it over there? Is it over here? I'll just do this. Click this video if you want to check out that one. I, I've got a lot of uh, tips for metal detecting on the beach in that video as well. Thanks for joining me. Much obliged. And take care of yourself.